In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use any model like Anthropics Claude from right within ChatGPT. By using the scripts and schemas I'm going to give you in the description below, you can use any LLM to repurpose that code to fit whatever model you want. This will let you use the right LLM for the right job. GPT-4 Omni's brand new model is amazing, but I love still using Anthropic to write things like emails and things that need more of a human-like sounding touch, which is why I came up with this hack I'm about to show you. So we'll jump right in to this custom GPT that I put together. It's called Claude Calling and I'll show you how it works very quickly. So if we go to create my content using Claude, it's going to ask me what I'm trying to write about. And if I tell it, write me a story about llamas, it should provoke the custom action I've embedded in the custom GPT. And I'll click confirm. It's actually communicating with a microservice I built in Replit. So it usually will take around 15 seconds if I'm using a smaller model like Haiku. But if I'm using something like Opus, it could take up to 30 to 40 seconds just because the there's a bit more latency there. So that's the output right there. And this is not from GPT itself. It's actually being generated from Anthropic just via that Replit service app. So I'll show you how this actually looks like underneath and kind of show the plumbing. It's pretty simple. All I've done is built a small custom instruction that says refer to this function called generate content. And then when the user sends a topic, use that topic and write with it using Cloud Anthropics models. So you can see here output wise, especially when it comes to length, GPT is not always the best at being verbose. I think this newest model, Omni is better at it, but I still like to use Opus and Sonnet where it makes most sense. So if we click in and we look at the hood of this custom GPT, we'll see here that my instructions are pretty straightforward. It's literally when the user says, create my content using Claude, ask them what they'd like to write about. And once you receive a response, from the microservice, invoke the generate content function. So if we go to the bottom here and we click on my custom function, this schema will be available to you in the description. So pretty much the only thing you need to change is this, the name of your Replit app. In my case, it's called Prompt Engine Anthropic, and it just has one post request, which is generating the content based on the topic that the user mentions in ChatGPT. So if we hop into Replit, I'll walk you through the high level of this code. If you don't know how to code and this has intimidated you, all you have to do is just take this code, paste it into something like ChatGPT. And if you want to change anything around or you want to add a new LLM or swap out the schema, you can do that all just using words. You don't even have to know how to code to be able to use this service. As long as you tell it that you're using Replit, it will know to reformat the code in a way where it makes more sense using my Replit code. So with that out of the way, if we get in, this is where I'm just setting my Anthropic key. And if you want to configure it, you want to go to secrets and then you want to add a new secret. And in this case, I called it Anthropic underscore API underscore key. Next, we have a root and this root's going to be the main way we actually call this API. So when it comes to generate content, what we're doing is we're collecting the content topic, which again is whatever you responded to, to that chat GPT question about what you want to write about. So we're just capturing that utterance and we're just ramming it into a prompt here that I wrote, which is whatever the user asks for, write it well and 5,000 words about whatever topic. So the reason why I'm using these squiggly brackets is just to refer to this content variable so that it's dynamic. Anything that's sent to this microservice will be able to pick that up and inject it into this prompt. Now, this is super simple, but I made it a, an F literal multi-thread, which in plain English just allows you to copy paste things in bulk without constantly putting apostrophes across the board. So I could change this to be anything where I can say, based on the content topic provided, produce a response using Shakespeare English. There we go. So if I was to click run and I was to redeploy this, there's nothing I really need to do outside of that. If I configure that change, because I've already set it up, the scheme is not changing. I'm just changing the underlying prompt. And if we get into this portion, this is where I'm using Claude Haiku. And I took this directly from their documentation. If you wanted to swap out the model for Claude 3 Haiku here, and you want to use the other models, all you have to do is swap this out for any of the ways that you'd call the other ones. So for example, Claude Opus would be this one, then Sonnet would be this one. And you could just copy and paste that here, redeploy, and now you'd be using an even more powerful model. Outside of that, this just converts it into JSON so that the GPT can actually read it when it's actually running it. And then this just initiates our microservice on Replit. So outside of that, 
all I did was click deploy and underneath the hood, if we go to settings here and we go to change deployment type, All right now it's going to delete it because it's in the middle of it. But what you want to select is reserved VM, which is around 20 bucks a month. That will make sure that your replit doesn't keep timing out because this type of microservice, typically you'll run it and it'll stay active for 15 minutes. But if you don't pay to keep it online the whole time, then it'll time out. So every time you use the GPT, you'll have to log in, go click run like I just did right now and then then you can use a service. So if you want to avoid that for pretty marginal fee, it's around 20 bucks a month and you can cover multiple services to run them on a reserve VM, especially if you're using it in a moderate basis and it won't really break the bank there. So now that we've redeployed here, if we go to overview, you'll see we have a new version now. And if we go back to the GPT and we get out of here, let's try this again. Write me a story about llamas. So we're going to click confirm again. And this time, because we've changed that underlying prompt, whatever response we get should be written in that Shakespearean English. And there we go. Verily mine, eyes behold, etc., etc. So you get the idea. So that's pretty much how you could actually use Claude within a custom GPT really quickly without really breaking the bank in terms of a microservice. And the only thing you need to stay at on top of is making sure that your inference costs aren't adding up too much, especially if you're using a more expensive model like Opus, at least for now. So this is how you'd implement Anthropic once again. But if you wanted to, let's say, create an extension of GPT-4 Omni. I just posted another video that you can find in one of these corners here where I'll show you how to actually just reference custom GPT using a GPT model. So you just get a longer custom instruction and you don't have to rely on the 7,000 characters you're restricted to right now in a custom GPT. So if this kind of content is helpful, I'm gonna keep pumping things out. I'm gonna release another video about how to actually extend memory so you can have your own memory bank within a custom GPT using something like a pine cone. So stay tuned for that. And outside of that, let me know in the comments if you have any questions on this deployment.